practice papers. All new taxi drivers have to pass a taxi theory test before booking and taking the practical driving. Test. Knowledge and understanding. The theory test is made up of two main parts. The multiple choice test and the hazard perception test. Both, which are Saturday at the same time, must be passed before a theory test certificate will be issued. The tests, which are computer-based, test your knowledge and understanding of a number of topic areas including driving theory, the highway code, best driving practice and issues relating to the taxi industry, multiple choice. Your knowledge of this information is tested in the first part as a series of multiple choice questions, some of which are based around case studies. Each question has four possible options, only one of which is correct, hazard perception. The second part of the theory test is the hazard perception part which tests your ability to identify hazards and take the necessary action. Practice papers. The practice papers concentrate solely on the multiple choice part of the test. There are 60 multiple choice questions, 20 of which are based around four separate case studies. The theory test is divided up into four bands. Band 1. Road procedure and responsibilities. eco driving and the environment. Band 2. Traffic signs and signal. Vulnerable road users and mechanical knowledge. Band 3. Health and safety. Legal responsibilities and safe loading of the vehicle. Band 4. Customer care. Carriage of vulnerable passengers and passenger comfort and safety. In this practice you can finish one band at a time and then check the answers and score. You will be asked to select one correct answer from the four possible answers given. There are four case studies in the practice paper with five multiple choice questions to each case. Study. The case studies are designed to test your. It does this by creating a scenario or a set of circumstances that you may encounter in a real life. Situation. You will then be asked a number of questions relating to the scenario which will require you to consider how you would react or behave in each case. Some questions will take longer to answer than others, but there are no trick questions. At the end, the practice paper has been designed as an educational tool as well as a test. At the end of the test you can check your answers and see if you have answered them correctly. You will find out why the answer is correct and reaffirm your knowledge and helps to ensure understanding as to why the question. If you have answered any of the questions incorrectly you will be guided to a reference source. This gives you the opportunity to study the recommended reading material and reach an understanding of why your choice was incorrect and help you develop your knowledge of the topic area. This development should go some way towards helping you to prepare for the real taxi theory test. Should you decide to pursue a career as a professional taxi driver? Rules and regulations. Keep your vehicle regularly maintained. Neglecting the maintenance of vital controls and fluids such as brakes. Steering and lubricants is dangerous. They need to be checked regularly. Having your vehicle serviced according to its maintenance schedule helps the engine work more efficiently, thereby saving fuel and reducing the effect on the environment by cutting emissions. Causing excessive smoke is an offence, and also contributes to the possibility of causing an incident or collision. If you notice thick black smoke coming from the exhaust, stop in a safe place and get help. Road positioning. You should normally keep to the left when driving. However, Keep clear of parked vehicles, leaving room for doors opening, vehicles moving off, children running out. Don't drive too close to the curb, particularly in streets crowded with pedestrians. Weave in and out between parked vehicles. It's unnecessary and confusing to other drivers. When necessary, ease over to the left to 
help the flow of traffic, let a faster vehicle overtake the correct position. You should always be in the correct position for the route you're going to take. Keep to the left if you're going straight ahead or turning left. Keep as close to the center of the road as is safe when you're turning right. Your position is important not only for safety, but also to allow the free flow of traffic. A badly positioned vehicle can hold up traffic in either direction. Blind spot. These are the areas behind and to either side of you which are not covered by your mirrors. You should always check these areas before moving off. Anticipation. Anticipation in driving means planning well ahead and acting promptly to deal with the changes going on around you. It should, with experience, become almost an automatic reaction. It's the hallmark of a good driver. You need to continually question the actions of other road users. If you plan ahead and try to anticipate the actions of others, you can avoid being taken by surprise, prevent some hazards developing. Save fuel by anticipating situations early so that you can plan your approach and therefore keep moving when it's safe to do so. Take early evasive action with regard to those hazards that do develop. Anticipation and good planning are essential to developing defensive driving techniques. Impact on the environment. Transport is an essential part of modern life. But we can't ignore its environmental consequences, local, regional and global. There's increasing public concern for the protection of our environment. With the result that many motor manufacturers are devoting more time effort and resources to the development of environmentally friendly vehicles. But you, as a driver, can also help. If you follow the principles of eco driving, you'll become a more environmentally friendly driver and your journeys will be more comfortable. You could considerably reduce your fuel bills. You could reduce those emissions that cause damage to the atmosphere. More importantly, You'll become a safer driver as you develop your planning, perception and anticipation skills to a high level. Try to drive in an eco a manner at all times. Whether you're driving for business or pleasure, fuel, like all forms of power, costs money as well as having an impact on the environment. Minimizing the fuel or power you use is always important, both for the planet and for your pocket. However, although it's good to save fuel, you mustn't compromise the safety of yourself or other road users when attempting to do so. Road safety is more important than saving fuel. At all times you should be prepared to adapt to changing conditions and it may be that you have to sacrifice fuel saving for safety. Route Planning Plan your route and avoid known holdups and roadworks. Always know where you're going, you'll use a lot of fuel by getting lost. Plan your journey beforehand. Use a map. Check a route planner on the internet. Program your satellite navigation system, if you have one. Try to use uncongested routes. Continuous research has resulted in new methods of helping the environment by easing traffic flow. Catalytic converters. These are exhaust treatment systems which remove up to 75% of carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide and hydrocarbons. The converter is a honeycomb-shaped filter with a total surface area about equal to a football pitch. This surface is coated with precious metals such as platinum, palladium and rhodium. These speed up a chemical reaction in the exhaust gases as the engine heats up. The oxygen content of the exhaust is monitored and a sensor triggers controls to adjust the air fuel mixture. The converter only deals with toxic and polluting gases. Carbon dioxide is still produced. Leaded petrol can't be used in vehicles fitted with a catalytic converter. Even one tankful can permanently damage the system. 
If you over-accelerate or exceed 3,000 revolutions per minute, the catalytic converter can't clean up emissions completely and will release some that are contaminated. Make sure, therefore, that you don't drive in such a way that this will occur. Mobile phones and radio communication equipment. It is illegal to operate a handheld mobile phone or similar device while driving. No driver should use a mobile communication device while in control of a moving vehicle. Never use a handheld microphone or similar device while driving. You should always find a safe and convenient place to stop before using such equipment. If your taxi is fitted with a communications radio or telephone, you should only use it while driving if it is fitted with a hands-free microphone. However, even using hands-free equipment is likely to distract your attention from the road. It is far safer not to use any such equipment or to try to tune the radio while driving. Driving time and rest periods The manual All you need to know to become a taxi driver offers recommendations as to working hours and the required duration of breaks for taxi drivers. Taxi drivers should not work for more than an average of 10 hours per day. The usual break should be 30 minutes for a shift of between 6 and 9 hours. For shifts lasting more than 9 hours, breaks should be at least 45 minutes. For shifts lasting 12 hours, a minimum of 2 breaks of 60 minutes each are recommended. Drivers should take at least 11 hours off in between shifts. Selecting gears It's not always necessary to change up or down through each gear. It's possible to miss out intermediate gears. This is known as block gear changing. It helps to reduce the amount of time you're accelerating. And as this is when fuel consumption is at its highest, it will help you to save fuel. As soon as conditions allow, use the highest gear possible without making the engine struggle. Pedestrians and cyclists you should give way to pedestrians already crossing when you turn, they have priority keep a special lookout. For cyclists coming up on your left take special care when crossing a cycle track. Bus or cycle lane hold back and allow a cyclist to clear the junction before you turn. Don't overtake and then cut in on them. Arrange an additional taxi to pick. Make sure you know how many seats your vehicle is licensed for and do not exceed that number under any circumstances as you may be putting both your passengers and your safety at risk. If you are faced with a situation where you have more passengers than you are legally licensed to carry, you should offer your passengers the option of waiting for an alternative vehicle that can Carry everyone or arrange to leave a passenger or passengers behind until alternative transport can be arranged. You cannot refuse to take at least some of the passengers as you have an obligation to completely hire. Parking at night cars can park without lights on roads with a speed limit of 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, or less. They must comply with any parking restrictions and not park within 15 meters 50 feet of a junction. They must also be parked parallel to and close to the side of the road or in a designated parking place and facing in the direction of the traffic flow. If you have to park on any other road, you should never leave your vehicle without side or parking lights unless a sign indicates that. Lights aren't required. It would be better to get it off the road altogether. Leave your vehicle standing on the right hand side of the road, except in a one-way street. Always switch your headlights off when you stop, even for a short while. It's an offense to leave them on when the vehicle is parked. The fixed glare can be very dazzling especially if, for any reason, the vehicle is on the off side of the road facing oncoming traffic. Leaving lights on can also use up the battery.